I just had to pull over because I just got the most shocking text message of my life, I think. All the text says is, hey, but let, let me set the scene. So it's about three years ago, and I am kind of seeing this guy, we're hooking up, whatever, fun dude, and we go out for a night with our friends, get shit-faced at the bar, and I go home with him, and we, you know, and then I go to sleep, and I sleep like a little baby. But I am not a girl who tracks her menstrual cycle at all. Um, and when she comes, she comes like a vengeful bitch in the night. And she decided to make a grand entrance while I was butt-ass naked in this dude's bed. And she, ooh. It was one of those periods where it's like, wow, really letting everything go. Really? Yo, I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes, some information that just, some stories are just meant to be just, just that. Keep that in your head. I feel sorry for this poor man because he woke up to some bullshit. Really shedding that lining. And so I wake up and I'm like, mm, something's wrong. Something isn't right here. And I'm looking down and I'm like, whoo. I'm talking crime scene, like, blood everywhere. I'm not wearing anything, because we had just, you know, had intercourse. And so I get up, and I go to the bathroom. And this man has no toilet paper. Like, how despicable and nasty. And no paper towels. Wait, 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 wait. Ho, 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 hey, hey. Hold up. a crime scene in this bed and you have the audacity to call him nasty you have the audacity to call him nasty after you done 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 then s s spilled your Crayola all over this man mattress. Spilled your red Crayola all, all over this man mattress, but he nasty. What that little tissue was gonna do? It sound like you need some some goddamn depends, bro. It's too. It's too. All I could you know, attempt to do something with. This a bare ass bathroom with some razors and uh, I do what any sane woman would do and I get on my phone and I call an Uber because I can't face Shit. this man. This is too much. We don't know each other like that. That's no no no. And when I tell you I left in the biggest hurry, I left my clip in extensions on the floor of his room. And those are expensive. And never spoke to him again until just now when I get a text at ten forty one P.M. Hey. What do you want from me? A new mattress? I'm not getting you one. First off, he nasty for even hitting you back. Secondly, I hope he responds and puts your disgusting ass on blast. Excuse me. You know the, the type of trauma, if I wake up and I see blood all over my bed and then you disappear? You know the type of shit that'll be going through my head? What? Working in the medical field, I saw my coworkers do the most disgusting things in the entire world. For example, I worked for free for six months as an intern under a doctor, right? He did internal and external vaginal exams, basically looking at the uterus. So the big old thing that you stick inside of people and take pictures with, you have to cover that with like a protective condom, right? So he would take that, stick it inside of people. As he took it out, he'd fling it behind him and try to make it in the trash can like...
Kobe, RIP to the legend. And I'm back there, gloved up, just ready to catch a f***ing stray. Literally just like waiting for the f***ing dirty condom to come flying so I can pick it up and throw it in the trash. Not the worst thing he did. So when you do um, any ultrasound exam... Sure, that's not the gel, worst right? thing he did. You gel onto people's bellies and then you do the exam, right? So he would take that gel and when he was done and he'd scoop it up off people's bellies and then he'd set it back, you know, in his little holder. Next patient would come in, he would reuse that mother gel. He would reuse the gel. He said, there's a shortage. We're in COVID. He didn't give a f***. And when I would try to just go and clean it anyway, thinking like, maybe I'm just going to do a good DD here today, he didn't yell at me. So my advice, next ultrasound you get, watch them squirt the gel. Imagine getting arrested for having a child with a dead body. Jennifer Burroughs is a 26... Yo, y'all on a roll today. Y'all, I ain't even gonna lie. Nobody even sent me these, bro. These is literally, this is literally me, me just going down my TikTok timeline, bro. Imagine getting arrested for having a baby with a dead body. That's how she came in. Six-year-old was working at a morgue when she was arrested after a DNA test proves her child's father was a dead body she was supposed to autopsy. But it actually gets worse from here. Because while Jennifer How was can it get worse? assistant pathologist at the morgue, she had relations with more than 60 bodies belonging to men aged 17 to 71 years old. She did this for two years until it led to the birth of her son. Her son's father was a 57-year-old veterinarian from Texas who passed away in a car accident in 2017. Jennifer was charged with 158 counts of indecent treatment of a corpse. Many psychologists and experts have debated why someone would do this. The reasons range from curiosity to severe mental illness. Some even believe Jennifer was suffering from psychosis. All right, after all that, I don't really know how to end this video, so stay safe out there and follow for more. I mean, how the hell are you going to stay safe when you dead? She out here... She out here taking down dead bodies. At this point, you defenseless. About six months ago, my neighbor asked me for the Wi-Fi password. I gave it to him because it didn't cost me anything and because I got along with him. Yesterday, I was walking home and he was at the door. I stopped to talk a bit as usual and he happily told me he now had Netflix. At that, I jokingly said, I work hard, barely have time to watch TV, but it's great. If you could lend me your password to watch some shows, I'd appreciate it. A voice was heard in the distance. It was his wife, sitting in the car. We can't give it to him because I'm the one who pays and I can't share it. The most total silence reigned. The man apologized subheading. I said there was no problem. We kept talking about other things. As they went in, he stayed out doing his stuff. Shortly thereafter, his wife came out to call him. She seemed very nervous, said the television wasn't working. My neighbor came into the house. I looked out the window. After a few minutes, he and his wife came to call me and told me the Wi-Fi wasn't working, that the password wasn't going in. I looked at them and said, I changed my password because it's me paying and I can't share it. Mm. The wife turned red and tried to say something. No. I said, ma'am, I have my network and you have your Netflix. Everything is fine. Everyone is happy. They turned around and left closing the door. They never spoke to me again. This story isn't mine, but here's the lesson I learned from it. Friendship must be mutual. Mm. Love must be mutual. Mm. Affection must be mutual. Mm. Sharing must be mutual. Mm. Man, with all them crazy videos I just reacted to, I needed this, bro. Yo, relationships, friendships must be mutual. If you are more of a friend to somebody than they are to you, it's time to end that relationship. If you like somebody or you love somebody more than they love you, it's time to end that relationship. Because what's going to happen is, in both situations, those people are going to take advantage of you. That's it. I don't need to say anything else. In both situations, those people are going to take advantage of you. Do not be taken advantage of. Have your dignity. This is how I'm ending the video. Squad.